Commission on Judicial Appointments is now in session. The Honorable Patricia Guerrero presiding. You may be seated. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the public hearing of the Commission on Judicial Appointments. As Chief Justice of California, I serve as chair of the commission. The other members of the commission are Attorney General Rob Bonta to my right and Administrative Presiding Justice Mary Greenwood to my left. And Janelle Baker serves as Secretary of the Commission. This hearing is to consider Governor Gavin Newsom's appointment of Daniel Bromberg to the Office of Associate Justice for the Court of Appeal, 6th Appellate District. The commission is in receipt of a letter from Governor Gavin Newsom appointing Mr. Bromberg to fill a vacancy created by the retirement of Justice Franklin D. Elia. The state constitution specifies that an appointment by the governor to the court of appeal is effective when confirmed by this commission on judicial appointments. The commission received correspondence pertaining to this appointment, and we made those letters available to the press and to the public a few days ago. Pursuant to a request by Governor Newsom, the State Bar's Commission on Judicial Nominees Evaluation, known as Jenny, has undertaken an evaluation of the qualifications of Mr. Bromberg for this position. Mr. Adam Hoffman is present with us to share the results of the evaluation later in today's proceeding. Mr. Bromberg has asked the following persons to be called to testify on his behalf. I will list both of the individuals separately to come up to the podium. Well, I will list them first and then ask them to come up individually to the podium, starting first uh, with Kathleen M. Sullivan, Esquire, partner with Quinn Emanuel, Urquhart and Sullivan, LLP, and Ms. Catherine E. Lehman, Assistant Secretary with the Office of Civil Rights with the U.S. Department of Education. We invite Ms. Sullivan to the podium. It's difficult not to add professor to the title. Welcome. <laughs> Madam Chief Justice, thank you. And there are few greater honors for a former professor than to see one's own students sitting on the bench. And I'd like to acknowledge what profound pride and honor I feel in appearing before you as one of my former students. And I want to turn to the business at hand about another former student. And I speak today, uh, thank you very much, uh, General Justice. It's a privilege to appear before you. Uh, I speak in my capacity as a partner at Quinn Emanuel, Urquhart, and Sullivan, and also as a former law professor at Harvard Law School and Stanford Law School and former dean of Stanford Law School. So I've had a lot of students in whom I take great pride and a lot of partners at my law firm in whom I take great pride. But perhaps none more than Dan Bromberg, who's before you today. Uh, I. Uh, uh, Dan, just to put it simply, is one of the finest lawyers I've ever worked with in my 40-year career, and I believe he's eminently, indeed superbly qualified for the position on the 6th District Court of Appeal to which the governor has nominated him. I first met Dan when he was my student in local government law, perhaps a clue early on that he was to take a great interest in state law and state constitutions and eventually California state law and the California Constitution. I later followed Dan's career after graduation as he rose to an appellate partner with the Jones Day Law Firm in DC. And when I was asked to join Quinn Emanuel in 2005 after I finished my tenure as Dean of Stanford Law School, and I thought, how will I do this? I need an experienced appellate partner to help. At just that moment, Dan's wife, Sophie, it turns out, had been offered a position uh, a great position at a tech firm in Silicon Valley, and Dan was looking to move to Silicon Valley, where my Quinn Emanuel office was located. When he got in touch, I was absolutely thrilled 
to recruit him to the position of my founding appellate partner in the Quinn Emanuel appellate practice. And I was thrilled when Dan and Sophie accepted the move to California for her job and now his. And uh, Dan started the appellate practice with me. Dan was a wonderful partner and a joy to work with. He was indispensable to our building a superb appellate practice from the ground up. Based on our 15 years of practice together, I can state with great confidence that Dan has all the qualities essential in a judge on the California Court of Appeal. First, Dan will make a great judge on the Court of Appeal because he is intellectually brilliant. He can readily absorb and analyze the most complex legal problems and move with ease across multiple subject matters, across a range of the subjects that will come before him as a judge. Dan's writing is graceful, meticulous, and clear. And his briefs always showed great insight, deep learning, and astute judgment. Dan had careful regard in every case, not only for the specific facts in the record before him, but also to the context of the case, its broader historical and precedential and policy context. He could go into the facts of a case with care and precision, and yet also understood that the case was one in a stream of cases and had to be viewed uh, from the perspective of the judges who would decide it as in that stream. Second, Dan will make a great judge because he has a deeply judicious temperament. He is principled and trustworthy. He is unfailingly civil, collegial, courteous, and considerate to all he works with. And he is exceptionally even-handed and fair-minded, crucial qualities in a judge. As an, even as an advocate, Dan always cared deeply about making his arguments faithful to the law. He never took liberties with the facts. He never overclaimed, and he always stated his opponent's position fairly. Third, Dan will make a great judge because he is deeply committed to public service. While in private practice, Dan devoted a great deal of his time and energy to pro bono work. We filed together a number of amicus briefs that Dan volunteered us for on civil rights and civil liberties and voting rights issues in an array of courts, both state and federal. And Dan also contributed his time while in private practice to the work of the American Constitution Society and the California Academy of Appellate Lawyers, to which he won a coveted and prestigious election by his peers. And Dan con considered it, I know, even though he is an extremely modest person, an exceptional honor when he followed the call of public service to his position as Governor Newsom's Deputy Secretary of Legal Affairs. So intellectual brilliance, judicious temperament, devotion to public service, I think those three pillars of a great judgeship are all well established and demonstrated by Dan's career. But finally, let me close by saying that Dan will not just make a great appellate judge, he will make a great California appellate judge. Now you might have heard something about how he spent some time on the East Coast at Harvard and practicing in DC, but over the 18 years since he made the wise decision to move west to our beautiful state, he and his wife Sophie have raised three beautiful children, all present today <laughs> as Californians. And uh, in fact, we had a debate before who was the most Californian and we couldn't settle it. Uh, not only that, not only have, have Dan and his family embraced their life in California with enthusiasm, Dan has devoted a lot of time to making himself a true expert in California law. He qualified for the uh, rather prestigious honor of being a California appellate specialist to receive a certification. And I know that uh, he will devote himself as a judge to his love of the law, his faithfulness to the law, and his particular love of California law and faithfulness to California law. So I know that Dan, again, he's a very modest person, but I can report, I know, because I know him well, that he consider, considers it the honor of a lifetime to have received the governor's nomination to a position on the Sixth District Court of Appeal. In short, I commend to you Dan Bromberg as a first-rate candidate 
for the judgeship on the Court of Appeal for which the governor has <clears throat> honored him with the nomination. And I commend him to you with the greatest possible confidence and enthusiasm. Thank you very much for considering these remarks. Thank you so much, Ms. Sullivan, for so um, detailing in such uh, an eloquent, articulate, and really uh, a way that shows how personally well you know him and all of the qualifications that he has to serve in this capacity. And we're thankful to Sophie for the decision to come to California. <laughs> <laughs> we next invite to the podium, Ms. Lehman. Madam Chief oh, Justice. Cheering remotely. So this is a hybrid. Welcome virtually. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to testify virtually. And Madam Chief Justice, Mr. Attorney General, Senior Presiding Justice, I am delighted to testify today in support of the governor's nomination of my friend, Dan Bromberg, to Associate Justice of the District, District Court of Appeal. Dan was, as Dean Sullivan mentioned, Deputy Legal Affairs Secretary during the years when I served as Legal Affairs Secretary to Governor Newsom. And I will confess that when I was assembling our legal team during the transition to begin the governor's administration, I didn't think we could actually recruit Dan to come work with us. <laughs> Dan was already legendary for his brilliant mind, his successful appellate advocacy, and his pro bono and public service commitments, including through supporting and developing other lawyers through the American Constitution Society. So I strongly doubted that the comparatively modest governor's office salary, even more modest, windowless tiny office in the not yet renovated horseshoe in the Capitol building, lengthy daily commute from the time before remote work, and demanding work to manage the range of legal issues impacting a new administration and enormous state would actually lure Dan. I have rarely, if ever, been more delighted to be wrong. Not only did Dan gladly join us in the work and gracefully and graciously take on any legal project, he thrived in it. And while I am confessing, I tested that thrive. I gave Dan some of our hardest projects. And even before the pandemic surprised and challenged us all, I asked sometimes impossible turnaround times and ridiculous briefing projects of Dan. You will be unsurprised that he never let the governor or the people of California down. Dan is and was an extraordinary colleague. His fellow justices will gain a peer who is in fact peerless. He is, as advertised, brilliant. More than that, Dan is generous, curious, kind, and astonishingly effective. And every bit as much as Dan is guided by legal excellence, he also hews always toward what is right. In every problem we confronted together, Dan drove toward what would secure the public good for Californians. I will reflect my own nerdiness in offering this next praise, but I also report I find Dan's writing thrilling and page turning. His opinions, once he joins the bench, will be a pleasure for all of us to read. And still better, he will be, as he always is, persistently and insistently justice focused. That he combines that justice focus with a towering intellect will be an extraordinary gift for all Californians who will rely on his decision making. I know because I saw his skill in navigating the hardest legal time in 100 years as he navigated the many challenges our state confronted in the first year of the pandemic. During the first 10 months of the pandemic, after which I left the governor's office and so no longer had firsthand knowledge of work there, we advised the governor as he issued 55 executive orders and we saw 80 lawsuits filed challenging various executive actions the governor took, none of which we lost in that time. Dan managed absurdly tight deadlines for the many overlapping emergency motions heard in cases challenging executive orders issued in reliance on rarely used legal doctrine applied to fact scenarios unlived until that time. Dan deftly managed developing complex law 
with hugely consequential stakes, often volunteering for more and harder work. In addition to steering us all towards safety in a deeply uncertain time, Dan's briefs were often beautiful to read and his frequently complex arguments distilled to ready page turners, making their logic intrinsically compelling. And in addition, Dan made time to mentor younger lawyers and to look after our team, developing their skills and promoting their confidence in quiet supports that others could easily have forsworn. Never ostentatious, Dan didn't tell me he had taken it upon himself to mentor the team we were developing. Instead, I heard from the other lawyers that Dan had taken one to lunch or met with another to review a brief or to work through an argument. I am confident that on this court, Dan would likewise be his colleague's support and would develop the law and its practitioners to secure more justice. I'm so grateful that Dan is interested to continue his public service in this next role on California's Court of Appeal, and I thank you for the opportunity to testify on his behalf today. Thank you very much, Ms. Lehman, for your thoughtful remarks. And not to tip our hand, but I'm also looking forward to the page turning experience of reading your future opinions. The commission now invites the chair of Ginny, Mr. Adam Hoffman, for the report of the evaluation conducted by his commission. Good morning, Chief Justice Guerrero, Attorney General Bonta and uh, Presiding Justice Greenwood. I am honored to present this report on behalf of the Commission on Judicial Nominees Evaluation to summarize the basis of the Commission's rating of Daniel Howard Bromberg for the Office of Associate Justice, the Court of Appeal, 6th Appellate District. The Commission conducted its evaluation of Mr. Bromberg on June 25th, 2021, finding him to be well qualified for service on the 6th District Court of Appeal. According to Commission rules, that rating reflects the Commission's determination that Mr. Bromberg possesses qualities and attributes indicative of a superior fitness to perform the appellate judicial function with a high degree of skill, effectiveness, and distinction. Mr. Bromberg was born and raised near Detroit, Michigan. He credits his parents for instilling in him the value of hard work and for encouraging him to be an independent thinker and a problem solver. He earned his BA degree in history from Yale College in 1986 and his JD from Harvard Law School in 1990, graduating magna cum laude. Mr. Bromberg spent the next two years clerking, first for the Honorable Louis F. Oberdorfer in the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, and then for the Honorable A. Raymond Randolph on the District of Columbia Court of Appeals. Mr. Bramberg, excuse me, Mr. Bromberg cites Judge Randolph as being the greatest influence on his legal writing. He recalls that every memorandum and draft opinion he sent to Judge Randolph was, quote, cut in half and then came back twice as good. Mr. Bromberg began working in private practice at Cahill, Gordon, and Rindle in New York City, primarily handling litigation and appeals involving the First Amendment. He then worked as an associate and later as a partner in the appellate practice at Jones Day in Washington, DC. Mr. Bromberg's practice largely focused on employment, antitrust, and products liability before the federal courts, including the United States Supreme Court, where he drafted numerous petitions for certiorari and merits briefs. He also maintained an active pro bono practice representing nonprofit entities and civic organizations. In 2005, Mr. Bromberg moved to California to join Gwen Emanuel, Urquhart & Sullivan as a founding member of the firm's appellate practice group, where he became the firm's expert on writs and appeals in California courts. He also continued to maintain an active pro bono practice, including handling appeals on behalf of criminal defendants. Wanting to focus more on public service, Mr. Bromberg left Gwen Emanuel in 2019 and took a position as a deputy legal affairs secretary at the office of Governor Gavin Newsom. In that role, Mr. Bromberg advised the governor and members of that office on a variety of legal issues and supervised cases litigated by multiple state agencies, including several high profile newsworthy cases relating to the significant policy issues confronting the state and the nation. Mr. Bromberg is currently the appellate practice leader at Pillsbury Winthrop Shaw Pittman. He is also a senior research fellow 
at the California Constitution Center at the University of California, Berkeley School of Law. And he teaches courses on appellate practice at the University of California, Hastings College of the Law. Mr. Bromberg's career as an appellate attorney has been marked by excellence. He is overwhelmingly praised by judges and practitioners. Those who responded to the commission's investigations were effusive in their praise of Mr. Bromberg's gifted writing skills, intelligence, and demonstrated collegiality. All of this led the commission to find him well qualified to serve on the Court of Appeal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. We now invite Mr. Bromberg to the podium to present a statement, if you wish, and to answer any questions the commission may have. Thank you, Madam Chief Justice. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, Presiding Justice, uh, it's an incredible honor to be here today. And I wanna express my profound gratitude to the governor for the confidence that he displayed in me um, in appointing me to, the, to a position um, as Associate Justice in the Sixth District uh, Court of Appeal. Um, I also wanna thank um, Adam and Catherine and Kathleen um, for the kind and really wondrous words um, that you gave. I, I can see from the, the somewhat quizzical and astonished looks from my <laughs> children um, that they didn't quite recognize the person that you were describing. Um, and to be perfectly honest, um, I don't as well. Uh, but it's certainly the person that I would aspire to be. Um, and if I were on the bench, it is the person that I would hope to become. Um, there is two corrections that I think I need to make. Um, one, Mr. Attorney General, um, although I did supervise uh, the COVID-19 cases, um, those were the result of an absolutely Herculean effort um, by the lawyers at the Department of Justice, um, and they are the ones who deserve the, the lion's share of the credit for that. Thank you. Um, the second is um, greatest influence on my writing style. Um, judge Randolph is an, is an incredible um, judge um, and um, kickstarted my, my career as Judge Oberdorfer did, but greatest influence in my writing, uh, I think would be uh, spending 10 years, 15 years uh, with Dean Sullivan, um, one of the greatest appellate advocates of, of our time. Um, you know, Kathleen, I can't tell you um, I couldn't count the number of things that I've learned from you. Um, what I will say is that every time I give a lecture and someone comes up to me afterwards and says, wow, that was just a great point. Um, I've shamelessly cribbed that one. From <laughs> um, you know, today is Friday the 13th um, and some people might think this is not the most auspicious day uh, for a confirmation hearing, uh, but that's not true for me uh, because my mother was born on Friday the 13th. Um, and although she couldn't be here today, um, technology permitting, I hope that she's watching, uh, along with my brother, uh, my cousins, and, and my uncle. Um, this is also a special day for me uh, because tomorrow would have been uh, my sister's 60th birthday. Um, I miss her. I know she would have been uh, uh, happy to see this, um, as would my father, uh, who passed away two years ago. Um, you know, my father was a very um, accomplished attorney in Michigan, uh, I was a real estate lawyer. Um, in a lot of ways, I've spent my life sort of emulating uh, what he did. Um, haven't really lived up to everything uh, that he did uh, because he was you know, very, very accomplished. Um, one thing he didn't do though was hold public office. Uh, he was very involved in charitable endeavors, um, not just sitting on boards, but actually managing a charity, um, one that made a significant difference in many people's lives. Um, I know that he would have been especially proud of me today. I, I also know that he would have shared my view that uh, one of the great strengths of our society is our legal system. It's not perfect, um, it makes mistakes. Um, and you know, I think as we've learned in the last six years, it's not impervious to, uh, to manipulation, uh, but it is still one of the great accomplishments of our society. Um, and it's a collective product of many, many judges over many, many years, um, hammering the law into something that is sensible, principled, and just. Um, it's a great honor uh, to be considered to join in that process. Um, and if I were confirmed, um, I would work ceaselessly um, to provide, to make a, a contribution to it. I'm sure that by this point, uh, my wife Sophie is thinking, You've droned on long enough, um, it should stop. 
Um, and so I will. And I'd be pleased to take any questions the commission has. Thank you, Mr. Bromberg. Attorney General. Thank you. Uh, good, good morning, Mr. Bromberg. I uh, really enjoyed hearing from Dean Sullivan and Assistant Secretary Lehman about their experience with you, their vignettes and their stories. And welcome to your family, both here and tuning in from afar. I um, enjoyed hearing about your, your brilliance, your legal acumen, your, your skill with the written word, uh, your focus in, uh, on, on California law, and um, your skill as an appellate advocate. And I think those will all, of course, serve you very well as, as a judge. And thank you for being willing to bring all those skills to um, serve uh, in, as an appellate uh, judge. I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, something that I, I noticed in, in the written materials that, that stood out to me, that, which was your commitment to regularly take on a pro bono case uh, while you were in private practice, serving at the highest level. Um, and I noticed that they, at least the notes indicate that they were often criminal appeals. Um, to me, it's very important for judges to have empathy and compassion to see the humanity and uh, the life circumstances of the parties um, that um, are involved in the cases that come before them. And uh, pro bono work was always something important to me, I know important uh, to you. So maybe just talk about why you did that. Uh, what was your why? And uh, perhaps also a little bit about um, anything more broad you wanna say about the, the uh, the bar and attorneys generally, and how how they should see pro bono work and service. Well, you know, I do think it's it's important for, for lawyers to give back um, to the society. Um, you know, we we are in a pri privileged position, or at least I, I have been um, very privileged, um, and it is important um, to be able to to give back. Um, I've always tried to do criminal cases. I think the very first pro bono criminal case that that I did, the fellow actually. I realized was was my age, um, and in a lot of ways, was not all that dissimilar, um, but had not had the same opportunities that that I had had, and had made some choices that you know were uh, were not good ones. Um, but you know, I, I realized that you know, but for the grace of God, you know, that could be me, uh, and I think that was an important thing. Um, you know, some of the pro bono cases I worked on were you know opportunities to work on you know cases of incredible importance. Um, to the uh, um, to the country, and uh, you know, I felt privileged to be, to be able to to work on them. Um, so that's always been a you know very significant uh, part of my practice. Thank you, Justice Greenwood. Thank you, Chief. Um, so I, I I have a question for you, but before I do that, I'm I'm simply going to state because we are on the record, so to so to speak. Uh, uh, on behalf of the Sixth District Court of Appeal, our gratitude to Governor Newsom for um, nominating such a, a, an outstanding candidate um, to sit as Associate Justice. Um, I've been with the court for five years, and during that time period, I think there was maybe four months when we had a full contingent of justices. Um, and uh, I cannot tell you how excited not to get, not to jump ahead, but I can't tell you how excited everybody at the court is, and really throughout the state, to see the courts of appeal um, uh, moving to a place where we actually have the, the justices so we can engage in, in what it is that we're called to do. Um, uh, never, and can I say never with leisure, uh, but you know, without feeling so stretched. So I'm very grateful to the governor and to Mr. Cespedes um, for uh, forwarding your name for consideration um, at this hearing. So with that, however, let me ask um, uh, uh, Ms. Sullivan and, and Ms. Lehman have spoken about the contributions that uh, that they think that you can make to the court, uh, which are so impressive. My question is, what is it that you hope to contribute to the Sixth District Court of Appeal and to um, the development of um, justice in the state of California? Well, you know, first of all, I'm hoping that I'll be a good colleague. Um, I'm hoping that I'll keep up um, with uh, all the many opinions that uh, need to be, to be issued. Um, you know, I don't come in with a, with a particular agenda. Um, you know, I've always been someone who has found things interesting um, that maybe others won't. Um, and, you know, I think um, providing clarity 
uh, to areas of, of the law that um, you know may not have been thought through. Uh, that's definitely something that, uh, given the opportunity, um, I really would like to do. Um, you know, I was teaching. Actually, I wasn't teaching at Hastings. Um, I was teaching at the, at Berkeley, and it wasn't appellate practice. It was California constitutional law. And to be frank, I actually wasn't really teaching it. I was sort of like a junior teacher with uh, Professor David Carrillo. But one of the reasons that I took it is took on that class was because I had learned a little bit about California constitutional law in the governor's office and realized um, really how, how little that was and wanted to to learn more. Um, and you know there are some fascinating issues in uh, California constitutional law, which I would really look forward to uh, to addressing. Um, More to come. But you know I do think that you know it's very important for for a judge to you know to strike a balance between uh, what I think Judge Oberdorfer was the uh, first judge I clerked for would have uh, described as uh, between humility and courage. Um, you know, on the one hand, it's important for a judge to be to be humble. You know, to realize that uh, um, it's not always the appropriate um, to say everything that you're thinking mm -hmm. in an opinion. Uh, that sometimes your thoughts are not fully um, uh, fully crystallized, and that you really uh, should be waiting to do that. Um, um, on the other hand, um, it is important that when those thoughts are crystallized. Um, and when you see an injustice, that you have the courage to act, um, and you know that's it's that balance between uh, humility and courage that I think um, I will you know be trying to strike. Well, I can say that um, uh, there's a great deal of excitement about your background as an appellate specialist and also uh, your background in civil and constitutional law, which would be tremendous additions to to our bench. Um, so, along with you know, as you mentioned, humility and collegiality. So um, I have no further questions. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Bromberg. I also would like to echo the welcome to your family, those here in person and those watching remotely. You mentioned a quizzical look. I, I take it as uh, not quizzical. I think they, they know you probably better <laughs> than we obviously do, but it's admiration also. <laughs> so thank you for being here as well. Um, my question to you is a comment also and a question. I read with interest all of your written materials. Um, there are many- I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, there are many accolades here. Um, some have also been mentioned. You're a brilliant writer, uh, your collegiality, your humility, and also we heard today that you're dedicated to mentorship of younger attorneys as well. Um, one of the comments stood out also that you have a public servant's heart. And so I'm sure you noticed that, but what were your thoughts when you read that? Is it true? And how will that serve you going <laughs> forward when you make this transition to the judiciary? Well, you know, I think with, um, you know, so many of those comments, um, you know, my reaction to them is I, I hope that's true. Um, you know, my, um, my career, I probably spent less time, well, I, I certainly spent less time in public service than I thought I would have. Um, part of it was, you know, coming to, to California at the time I did, and, you know, there were always sort of reasons not to, to be engaged in, uh, in public service. Um, you know, I wish that I had uh, had done much more, and I am, you know, very, very happy to have had the opportunity. And, um, you know, Catherine, I don't know if you're still there, um, but, you know, the the opportunity that you gave me to work in the, in the governor's office, you know, I, I can't say, um, you know, more about that. Um, it was, you know, an absolutely tremendous position, and um, you were, you know, a, a tremendous role model, um, you know, both in, of in, integrity and grace under pressure because, you know, Catherine talked about all the cases that I worked on, um, but that was only a fraction of the cases that were in front of the office and she was doing all of, all of them. Um, uh, you know, and, and really the sort of judiciousness um, that, uh, that Catherine displayed, um, I, I think I would sort of speak for everybody that uh, I hope that I get the opportunity to, uh, to speak on her behalf and in this context someday. Thank you. This does complete the list of witnesses who are testifying here today. Are the members of the commission prepared to vote? All in favor of confirming Mr. Daniel Bromberg for this position, please say aye. 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 On this record and the correspondence received, the commission finds Mr. Daniel Bromberg qualified to be an Associate Justice of the Court of Appeal, 6th Appellate District. We confirm his appointment 
Congratulations, Justice Bromberg. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chief Justice. That does conclude the formal portion of this hearing. We're adjourned, and Mr. Bromberg will be sworn in and take his oath separately, but we do invite you to make any comments, additional comments, if you wish. I mean, I, I think I've spoken enough, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. This concludes the COJA hearing. Thank you all.